Before you create a class, you might want to start by brainstorming how you want your class to be used. And if you remember, we like to say our classes are like blueprints, blueprints that we use to instantiate objects or instances of the class. So if we're designing a class, then the first thing you might want to do is decide what object we're trying to represent with this class. This is the type of decision that you'll start um, the class design process with. If you remember, a class is made up of two different components, the first being member variables, the second being member functions. Member variables represent the information that we want to store about an object or its state. And then member functions represent the operations, like what kinds of things can that object do, its behavior. So if you want to make this more concrete, let's say that we want to represent a dog, just like this very, very cute Samoyed puppy that I'm hugging here. What kind of state could we store about this dog? Like what kind of information can we store about a dog? We could store things like its name, what breed it is, or what its fur color is. And all of these things make up the state of the dog class. And we'd represent in our code as member variables. Now, how about a dog's behavior? What kind of things can a dog do? So some ideas, dogs can bark, they can roll over, they can play fetch. So these are some of the things that I thought of, um, but you could define like what kind of information you want to store, what state that you want to add in addition to this, and what other things that you think a dog should be able to do when we're representing it in our code. So this process, this design process is just generally taking some real world idea and converting it into code by deciding how we want to represent it by choosing what state and behaviors that we want to write down. So before we write any code, we can represent classes with a class diagram. And on your worksheet, we have this template here that helps you think about state and behavior so that you can use it to create a class diagram. So we have here uh, this template that first kind of tells you, like, you should decide what object that you want to represent. And usually when we're making a class name, we want it to be descriptive and describe kind of like what we're trying to represent with this class. We also have the behaviors, which says this is what an object should be able to do. And then the state, which tells us what information that we want to store about that object. So as an example for this template on your worksheet, we're trying to define a donation tracker class. So the donation tracker has, first and foremost, its behaviors. If we're trying to represent something to that keeps track of donations, then there might be some sorts of behaviors that we want to have uh, defined within this tracker. The first being uh, a constructor like this, where essentially it doesn't do anything. It has no input, no output. Um, it's just a equivalent to essentially your default constructor. But another behavior that you might want to do in a donation tracker object is allow people to make donations. So we have this behavior called donate. Um, it takes in as input a donation in double form, like a dollar value donation. Um, and it doesn't return anything, but what it does do is store or record that donation value to the container. And the third behavior that we have is um, average donations. This behavior allows people to compute what the average donation that we have recorded so far in our tracker. So for this state, when we're thinking about what information that we would want to store within our donation tracker, well, if you just think about um, storing a list of donations, then a vector might be the perfect data structure that we could use to store all the dollar values of our donations. So we might want to use a vector of doubles to store uh, a track or record of all of the donations that we've um, seen already. And once you've decided on the behavior and the state of a class, then what you can do is convert that into a class diagram. Um, the class diagram is essentially just a more digestible way of viewing our class. Um, so in the top row, we have the name of the class. So donation tracker is the object we're trying to represent. And then the next row, we have its state. What information do we store? It's represented by this double uh, vector, this vector of doubles that stores all the donations that we're trying to track. That is the state of our donation tracker object. In our member functions, we have the behaviors in our 
final row of this class diagram, we have that construct behavior, this constructor here. And we also have the donate behavior, this function that allows people to pass in as input the double value representing their donation. And then also a function to allow people to compute the average donation of what we are tracking so far.